Hey guys, come on in. The heat is on because we got a big pattern change setting up across the United States and Canada. I'm going to talk about those big changes in a second, the storm track, the temperatures, and much more. But before we begin, click the subscribe button if you're new to this channel and want detailed forecast breakdowns, long-range forecasts, much more detailed than you would see on TV. And we also fact-checked forecasts for you as well here on the channel. So, Let's just get right into things here. Uh, what we're going to look at first is what the uh, CPC, the Climate Prediction Center, is saying. Then I'm going to walk you every couple of days in advance here with this pattern. Now, the Climate Prediction Center has much above average temperatures for the United States, except for the southwestern United States near Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and parts of eastern Utah. And this is for the 27th through the 31st of January. Now, when you're watching this, this is probably going to be a couple of days uh, past the 27th, as uh, as it is when I'm recording now. It's a little bit past then as well. So we're really talking about towards late January into early February. And the general map here is forecasting probabilities of above average temperatures. And you can obviously see anywhere in this moderate shade of orange right here, really 50 plus percent chance um I, I think it's going to be even higher than that and again this is kind of an average for several days and you go all the way up in the northern u.s here minnesota michigan and uh all the way out into wisconsin and the dakotas that's where your core is where you have an 80 percent chance maybe even uh, up there and then uh really everywhere else in the u.s a at least a 33 percent chance now well, our precipitation uh, is also going to be above average here late month, especially in the plains and the southern plains and then the northwestern United States near Washington and Oregon, as there's going to be a couple of storm systems that move out into that area. Below average uh, precipitation out here in the northeast, although I'm not, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think there's going to be a couple storm systems that track into that area and then also the southwestern United States towards California. Everywhere else, slightly above average. Southeastern United States, Midwest, Northern United States. So that's the precipitation. As we head towards early February, things change a bit, but not a whole lot with temperatures. You can see slightly cooler than average temperatures in the Southwest United States in New Mexico and Arizona. Everywhere else above average by the CPC, especially from California north up into Montana, back down into Kansas, all the way down towards Florida and back up into the East Coast and points to the north of that, much above average uh, potentially, with a moderate to high chance for above average temperatures. Precipitation wise, aside from California, Nevada, Arizona, and parts of Utah, gonna be above average, and then below average in the uh, Southwestern United States. Above average in uh, the Northwestern United States and the South Central. And again, this is from about the 29th of January through the February 4th. So precipitation should be uh, decently active even though it's gonna be warm. Now, we're gonna walk you every couple of days here and I'm gonna show you the pattern and the general storm track. This is Sunday now. Okay, so you're looking at some ridging that's starting to build into the West Coast. These are height anomalies. So um, essentially the warmer heights, the higher heights are gonna be kind of in the red shades and the cooler are gonna be in the blues and the uh, the purples, and obviously we don't have much of that. But when we get higher heights, it's measuring the 500 millibar level in the atmosphere, which is you know near and below the jet stream. When they rise, the air is kind of expanding. You can kind of think of the air expanding, so there's warmth happening, and then when they contract, it's compressing, so there's cooling happening. Now, if, if you go out here in the East Coast here on Sunday or Saturday night into Sunday, you see this low pressure system with lower height anomalies. We got a low pressure system out in the East Coast. Now, with temperatures, you're usually going to get your coolest temperatures near and behind these little uh, short waves, okay, so, or troughing, but this is more of just a, a little mini short wave in the atmosphere. Nothing crazy. There's not going to be a whole lot of cool air, but your high pressure is typically going to be near and behind it. Ridging out east, you can see, or ridging out west, excuse me, that's going to be bringing in warm temperatures into the west and central United States. And then a ton of ridging out here, backing into Canada, kind of around this low pressure system. Okay, so that's kind of why this thing's kind of, in a way, closed off and small. But lots of ridging into Canada from about Quebec all the way out to, uh, maybe even all the way out to 
Alberta and Saskatchewan. So very, very warm, especially the eastern part of Canada on Sunday. Now, if you look at the temperature anomalies, look at that. Canada, you know, the east half, really the entire east half of Canada, 20 to 25 degrees above average. West half averaging about 5 to 10 degrees above average. If you get into the United States, you can see... Generally speaking, the northeastern United States, out ahead of that low pressure, going to be above average. But behind it, there is going to be a nice front. It's not going to be overly strong because we have ridging out north of it. So you're not going to get these polar outbreaks behind the low pressure systems that you often do with uh, snowstorms. Only going to be a weak shot of cold air, some dynamic cooling with that system, really about three to five degrees below average and this is including the southeastern united states out into about the midwest towards iowa missouri maybe all the way out into wisconsin as it moves east but overall everywhere else in the u.s really almost exactly averaging about three to seven degrees above average in the southern plains maybe a little bit more towards texas where it's about 10 degrees or so above average on sunday as you can see, this is your precipitation map, your low pressure system out here in the northeastern United States, your cold front kind of sitting right there-ish. And uh, behind it, some snow, and really not a whole lot of cold air though, so still dealing with some kind of uh, wet snow, even some indications of rain way to the west of that thing. Probably going to be mostly snow though. Uh, the high pressure is going to be sitting over the central U.S. That's what's going to be delivering this uh, cooler air very, very briefly. But like I said... The high is not overly strong, and obviously you got some uh, warming happening here in the west that's going to be quickly moving in. Storm system moving into the northwestern United States might cool things off just a bit and keep things cool up there, but we'll have to watch that. Temperature-wise on Sunday here, really warm across the south half of the United States where temperatures will be in the 40s, 50s, and then all the way down into the Texas and southwestern united states 60s 70s and 80s and then florida as well farther north your coldest air really this is for highs this is around 7 p.m on saturday you can obviously see highs are in the 20s and 30s and really uh 40s as well so you know for january that is pretty warm so as we get towards sunday here that ridging moves into the united states this low exits so the warm air is going to build in meanwhile there's a trough sitting out west which could bring a little bit of uh, th stormy activity for Washington and Oregon. Usually out ahead of these uh, high, lower height anomalies, though, it will warm. Okay, as you get a low pressure system that kind of hangs out around here and it draws up warmer air. So out ahead of these things, you can get warmer air, but it's usually right around near and behind these things where the coldest air is going to develop. Meanwhile, uh, ridging, so warm for the rest of the country and then very warm in Canada as we head towards uh, Sunday and Monday and obviously temperatures look pretty much the same except it's now warmer in the Midwest southwest still a little bit or a southeastern United States still average to slightly below everywhere else in the United States five to ten degrees above average and then obviously you can see uh, storm system moving into the west here on, on uh, Sunday night into Monday with uh, snow in much of the uh, northwestern United States the uh, storm system out east is starting to exit Still a little bit of snow in Maine. Everywhere else, high pressure setting in and warming conditions. As you can see, southerly winds. Now, you can see those isobars right there around the high pressure. Well, it's going uh, you know, clockwise around this high. So you get south winds out ahead of it. You can kind of follow these isobars. So warming conditions across the plains now. And you can see temperatures cool in the northern half of the United States still, uh, but again, above average. So even though it's in Canada here, for example, it's 20s, 30s, still above average, way above average in that region. Southwestern, south central, and southeastern United States, 50s, 60s, even up into Kansas. You know, you're getting south winds, even in Kansas, you might even get some 50s and 60s here. So we had towards Sunday and Monday. Wednesday, we'll go a couple days in advance, there's another system that kind of advances onto the United States here, this little trough right here, this little short wave. Nothing crazy, but there will be a system out here in the plains. It might cool things down slightly near and behind it. Again, out ahead of it, it's going to be warm because it's drawing up moisture and warmth from the Gulf. Another system out here in the northwestern United States, uh, so it might be uh, a little bit warmer and active out there. Probably pretty warm here in the southwestern United States and really everywhere else, especially up into Canada. Again, as you can see, 
height anomalies or uh, temperature anomalies 20 to 25 degrees above average from you know quebec all the way out to uh, alberta and shashkawan shashkawan however try to say that 10 times fast and then uh, obviously the rest of the united states above average except for the southeastern united states so about 5 to 15 degrees above average especially in the plains here where that low pressure system is uh, so that's that and then um, as we look at the precipitation here on wednesday tuesday night to wednesday you can see a low pressure system developing in the plains so this is another storm system we're gonna have to watch lots of warm air with this thing though so and lots of ridging and high height anomalies above this thing so i'm not thinking this is going to be a major snowstorm there could be some pockets of snow around and behind it for the midwest for the north central u.s as this moves to the east it will affect parts of the midwest and northeast but mostly a rain event again as this moves to the east we'll have to watch it if it can draw enough cold air down it could be a snowstorm but a little bit far out we'll have to watch this thing going to be mostly a rain event for most of the united states there's that system out west on the day here on tuesday night into wednesday temperatures cooling off a little bit in the the west warm here now in the midwest with 40s 50s and 60s especially in the southern u.s where we got even 60s and 70s cool in the northeast with uh, temperatures in the 30s or so but again this is mostly above average even it's january so as we head towards friday the pattern does change a little bit but still lots of ridging out here in canada so it's pretty much the same in canada high height anomalies ridging here in the southwestern united states that's starting to punch in so i'd suspect that the southwest and west coast starts to warm up again really towards the weekend here around the 31st and beyond zonal kind of flat flow here in the east half southwest southeastern united states that could deliver a little bit of cool air kind of in this region right here behind that little storm system that moved through but nothing overly strong uh, with this type of look you can see a little bit of cool air here one to three degrees below average in uh, new mexico colorado and uh wyoming a little bit of cool air behind that system here in nebraska iowa the dakotas and minnesota as well again two to four degrees below average everywhere else across the united states it's almost a dead even two to five degrees above average and then obviously up in canada you know all the way coast to coast dealing with 10 to 20 degrees above average so very warm here in canada very very warm storm system uh, on uh, friday here is starting to exit thursday night into friday here into the east coast look at that though all rain lots of warm air uh, we'll have to watch this because the 540 line is all the way down there so we're dealing with some temperature variations from surface to the mid-level so there might be some mixing and uh, other factors that we'll have to work out as we get near sometimes these low pressure systems can kind of create their own dynamic cooling as well so this is something we'll want to watch but as of right now it looks like mostly a rain and mixed type of event for the northeastern and midwestern u.s north of that high pressure but again pretty warm up there behind this thing a little bit cool and then another storm system in the west coast moving in shore on the weekend uh, near and ahead of that ridge and then temperatures really uh, pretty warm out here out east temperatures in the 30s 40s and then all the way in the southern u.s it's a little bit cooler not as uh, warm but still 50s and then the the north central u.s again behind that low pressure system might cool off a bit with temperatures a little bit more like january and uh you know teens and maybe even a little bit of single digits in the dakotas and then obviously in canada you're dealing with 20s and uh, single digits and even sub-zero temperatures uh, in the northeastern part of Canada but again you got to keep in mind this is January so even that's above average and then as we head towards Sunday one more day here you can see the ridging kind of starts to build into the country again and so it starts to warm up and then the southeastern United States you can see that troughing out behind it you'll get some cooler temperatures behind that and, and ahead of the ridge is where you usually get your coolest and uh, that'll be kind of in the Missouri Arkansas area kind of the central u.s essentially south central u.s and then kind of some flat flow out here out in the the west coast maybe start to increase a little bit of activity again there as well and then uh, as you can see temperature anomalies a little bit cooler out here behind the ridge in the west coast northwest coast parts of uh, washington and then again yeah cooler here in the south 
the central and the southeastern United States with temperatures two to four degrees below average. Above that, it's going to be uh, really the whole northern half of the United States, two to four degrees above average. Canada, still really warm up here. Really the eastern two-thirds of the country, five to as much as 20 degrees above average, especially the central part here of Canada. So very warm. As you get towards the uh, the temperatures here, look at that westerly flow really all across Canada except the eastern portions where there's southerly flow. There's a low the powerful low pressure system uh, up here and you know kind of nearing the Hudson Bay and stuff and really you can see western flow. It's not really coming up from the Arctic. It's really just westerly flow, so not going to cool off a whole lot with that system. Then obviously the southern U.S., you can see out ahead of that ridge, you're going to get some return flow. So flow coming back up north, going to be warming up here in the southern plains, cold up in the northern U.S., and then the northeastern United States as well. But when I say cold, it's still above average. So even though it's 20s, 30s, teens, still above average for this time of year. This is around Sunday night at 7 p.m., the 3rd of uh, February. Very warm here in the southwestern United States towards California and uh, Arizona, where temperatures could be in the 70s and 80s. Uh, and then obviously Florida, a little bit cooler uh, down there uh, on uh, towards the weekend into Monday with temperatures kind of in the 50s, 60s in that region. So a little bit cooler air in the southeastern United States by then. But uh, these are kind of subtle waves that move through, so these will change a bit. Overall, the average temperature across the United States and especially Canada, going to be probably through this period about two to four degrees above average, and Canada as much as about 10 to 20 degrees above average, especially in the central portions of Canada. So very, very warm in Canada consistently for several days up there. So very, very warm. Going to be a big, big winter thaw really anywhere, I would say, Kind of south of that line right there where temperatures will be much of the day above freezing through the next week to two weeks. North of there, it won't be much of a thaw because temperatures will be in the 20s and 30s, but it will still be much above average. So what I'm going to do here is one more one more map here, and we'll look at the uh, precipitation for that day on Monday. You can see uh, precipitation out here in Canada or uh, the west coast of the United States, California. Oregon, Idaho, and Montana. So another wave kind of moves in. That old storm exiting into the northeastern United States. And generally speaking, warmer temperatures out here in the south central and central United States. Behind that high and ahead of that low where return flow will be uh, pretty common. So if you guys haven't seen my uh, radar time lapse, this is something I made. It was 10 years of radar data. You can check it up up here or link in the comments below. It's 10 years and two hours with binaural beats in the background. You got to check that out. Other than that, this is going to wrap up today's video. Subscribe below if you like these detailed forecast breakdowns. And uh, we release these. We release storm chases. We release live streams or severe weather events weather data visualizations, and much more. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Share it with a friend. We'll see you soon.